Hi, uh, my name is Neil Trulio. I'm the Education Director here at Series Fest, and I'm excited to be a part of the Collegiate Spotlight presentation that you're watching. Uh, all of this is possible thanks to our sponsor, Once Upon a Time Productions, who is our educational partner and sponsor, and they make all of our educational programming happen, uh, especially this Collegiate Spotlight. And I'm excited because I'm here with the creator of the safety plan, uh, Jesse Randall. So Jesse, thanks for being Hello. here. Thanks um, for having me. Yeah. So we all just saw the pilot. Um, I think my first question is, you know, the story specifically, where did the story come from? Um, how much is it drawn from real life, people you know? Uh, tell us about the experience of writing the pilot first. Um, I had all, always wanted to do something sort of like David Sedaris-esque about that time in your life where you're like, sort of in limbo, but um, it's hard to film that as a movie because having one character just on their own or whatever. So. Anyway, when I moved to LA, I guess like almost four years ago now, um, I had previously moved to New York when I was 20 and didn't know anybody and kind of just did the like Patti Smith, Madonna thing. I was like, oh yeah, it was really, really hard. Uh, and then like slowly over time you accumulate friends and whatnot, but you know, we kind of grew up on television and like friends specifically, like in the pilot episode, Rachel runs in and meets her chosen family and they're friends forever for 12 seasons or how many, Ever seasons of show that was. Um, I remember being a kid and being like, why doesn't my life have built-in friends like that? How does that happen? Um, so I've always kind of been interested in that, doing something around that subject. Uh, and then when I moved to LA almost four years ago, um, I at least knew people and was, I was older and had more experience under my belt surviving on my own. But I still was like, wow, this is really hard. I can't imagine like, what my life would be like had I not got out sooner it would have been a nightmare. And then I thought, oh, that'd be a really funny idea for a show. <laughs> um, so I eventually started writing drafts about like starting over again, blah, blah, blah. And then the chosen family aspect came in. Um, yeah. How autobiographical are the experiences? Because um, you know, they're certainly very unique to this character, but I, I feel like they come from a place of honesty. So. Uh, um, Fortunately, none of these happen. I've gone through, I've actually had a lot of anxiety about doing something about a character my age because I knew everyone would be like, this is supposed to be you, isn't it? And like project their weird stuff onto me, and they have. Um, but fortunately, these are all fictional experiences. None of this happened. Um, even the character in the third episode, she was my first like LA friend. She's helped me co produce it. She's in the next room, helped me set up for this interview. So that character is like, inspired by her personality, but like that never happened between us. I would never continue being friends with somebody like that. So we've been friends for like four years now. Um, so, I, but the thing about like meeting people that you connect with that kind of thing, that was definitely an issue for me when I was younger in life. Cause I moved to New York and didn't know anybody. And it was difficult to like acquire friends when you weren't already in a group. Um, but slowly over time, I slowly acquired them and whatnot, but I'm happy to say all the stories are fictional. <laughs> what, what are the challenges as a writer when you're facing down um, the idea of writing about things that become stereotypes or things that maybe people project onto uh, others? Because I know a lot of the, the things that this character is dealing with sort of seem like, you know, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but you know, they come based in what someone might consider a stereotype or a stock. Um, what, how do you write that and still give it humanity and personality? Um, that was actually one of the issues with the third, with the original draft of the third episode. She, the character was just so basic and I was like, why would he be friends with her <laughs> if she's this annoying and basic? And I, that's why I ended up basing it on my friends. I was like, okay, well, she's fun. Everyone loves her. Like, that way it's more of a dichotomy of like, yeah, they have these, this character has these issues, but you also see why they would appeal to other people. Um, and I think specifically with marginalized people, especially gay people, like we don't, we didn't grow up with like a bunch of role models in our families and whatnot, or what have you that were also gay. So we kind of had to rely on television to like give us an idea of who we wanted to be when we grew up. Um, so I, do tend to find that people, but I find this not just with the LGBT community, but with everybody, like everybody kind of lives up to this 
stereotype of what they think an adult is and what their life is supposed to look like. And it's, it's hard to figure out a balance of like aspiring to be better than you want to be, but also being authentic and right. yeah. Uh, let's talk about the production. So how does this come together from, uh, you know, you have the idea, you write the script, you're in development. Uh, how does it get from that phase to what we just saw? Oh, a long way. Um, I actually specifically went back to school because I thought, oh, the financial aid money will help pay for it. I did, but also LACC has a partnership with the Hollywood Foreign Press Association where they give out grants every fall. So I've got two grants from the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, thank you, uh, to help make this. Uh, because the budget was so low, we shot it in pieces over the course of like a year and then post-production, because it was also so low. My team back in New York who I made films with, I was like sending stuff off to them and we were all like living our lives. So it was about a two year process altogether. But I think we shot like a segment per season, if that makes sense. So like in January, we filmed like the Christmas one and then spring we shot like the one with the four guys and then so on and so forth. Um, but we didn't have the luxury of filming it all at once, which I'm kind of glad in retrospect because we did the therapy intros last. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to say in those scenes at first, but after we had shot those segments, it's like, oh, I kind of have a stronger understanding of what this is about. So I'm glad we shot it in pieces. My original plan was to shoot nine of these, which would have taken forever. And I'm glad that I didn't. So, yeah. Right. Uh, so you talked a little bit about what benefit the university gave you. Um, can you talk a little bit more about sort of the connection to the college? Was this shot as part of course curriculum? Is this something independent? How does that work um, connecting with the university and then creating a project like this? Um, well, I was able to use um, one of the segments as a class project for like our final, um, but mostly it was an independent project I had already had planned. Uh, the courses are all very specific there, which is great. Um, but yeah, it was mostly an independent project, and that's why I went back to school. But um, I only used one of them as like a class project. So, if you're talking to young artists who are watching this, um, can you talk about the benefit of using university or engaging the university? Because someone might say, you know, what if I just moved straight to LA and went right into the industry and started working? Um, ha I know you benefited, obviously, from being a part of um, Los Angeles City College, which is where this was produced. Uh, can you talk about, like, if you were talking to a younger artist or yourself as a younger artist, what's the advice you'd give them when they're kind of picking their path? Yeah, um, I actually, studying film is a really difficult thing because it's an experience-based industry, but we're living in a world where you have to have a college education if you want to go anywhere. Um, I actually went to film school for the first time in North Carolina and everyone I knew that had uh, majored in film were not working in film because they were just swamped in student debt and they had to take jobs to pay off those Sally Mae loans and I thought I'm so far away from the industry I'm better off not finishing school and moving to New York or LA and I decided New York was better for me because it was a little more not just film based as LA is um and I studied writing there at HB Studios with an accomplished playwright. And so I didn't finish school, but I was able to make stuff independently and get it into festivals. But finding the resources to take it to that next level without a college education was really hard. So now that I've been back in school, like I never expected to get grants from the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. That was, to even like have a document that they send me with their official like stuff on it was just, I never expected that. So I think in terms of like, and even being able to submit to festivals, like, you know, it was made on a low budget. It's not perfect, but it gets the point across of what I'm trying to do. I think people are a little more forgiving that, like, it's a student film or whatever. Um, and I've also got to workshop, like, the 30-minute pilot there. Not the 30-minute written pilot, I mean. I got to do screen test versions of it there. I got to get feedback from professors, and I just never had that on my previous films. I, my previous films, I worked on my own. I was just like, hope for the best, hope it's not, hope it doesn't suck. Um, but I got a lot more support on this project than any project I've ever done because I was enrolled in school. So my advice to somebody younger would be, um, study the basics in film or at a state university or whatever, and then maybe just take like 
not necessarily a year off, but like maybe a semester off or something and see if you can do this on your own. Because the thing that film school doesn't teach is how to put a production together. That's something you learn on your own. There's, they just can't teach that. They can tell you all the information all they want, but you have to do it on your own through trial and error. So I, even before I went back to school, I kept thinking, like, wouldn't it be great to go back to school knowing what I know about film school now? And so that's what I got the opportunity to do. And this project turned out better than anything I've ever made over the past decade. So. So what's next for you? What's next for the project? Um, if people are watching this and say, I'd like to see more, um, what, what, what's next? What, where can they find more content or find more of you? Um, I'm working on my next uh, web series with my producing partner and writing partner. Um, so that will be, we're trying to figure out how to shoot it though amid this apocalypse. Um, but in terms of the project, you just watched the safety plan. My next step would, I'd like to get it on the air, but every time I'm finished writing the pilot, something crazy happens. I'm like, damn, now I'll rewrite it. Now I think it'd be great if he moved here during COVID-19. <laughs> so I'd like to keep rewriting it and shopping around the 30 minute pilot and seeing if we can get it made, but I'd love to see this on the air and maybe a streaming platform in some degree. Awesome. That's it. Thank you so much, Jesse, uh, for sharing your piece with us, your time with us. Thank you to Once Upon Time Productions for making this possible. Um, it was great to have you. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having me.